Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Nadav Noor. I'm a PhD student uh, from uh, Professor Tal Dvir's lab in Tel Aviv University, Israel. And I uh, came to speak about 3D printing of uh, heart tissues, actually. I'll start from the motivation of this project. Uh, cardiovascular diseases are the number one uh, cause of death in Western world in which uh, heart attacks take a significant portion. A heart attack occurs when uh, one of the major blood vessels leading uh, blood to the left ventricle is get clogged. Because of that, the heart cells in the left ventricle are dying, and since uh, they cannot proliferate by their own and uh, expand, they just are being replaced with uh, scar tissue. This scar tissue is uh, not elastic, cannot contract, and the statistics are uh, pretty harsh. Above 50% of the people that uh, had a severe heart attack will die within uh, five years of that event. Today, heart transplantation is the main treatment for that uh, uh, disease. And uh, since the number of donors is uh, much smaller than the amount of patient needs to be donated. Uh, many patients die while waiting to be uh, donated uh, an organ. Uh, so researchers around the world are searching for new solutions for this uh, disease. A very uh, hot topic and uh, field uh, that's trying to give this uh, kind of solution is tissue engineering. In tissue engineering, we try to create a new tissue in the lab and then transplant it upon the uh, defected organ. We take uh, uh, cells, we expand them from different origins. We expand them in the lab. Uh, then we see, when we have enough amount of cell, we seed them inside a 3D material, a scaffold, that gives them a mechanical, property, mechanical uh, properties to help them uh, sustain. We incorporate different uh, molecules, uh, small molecules, nanoparticles, growth factors, all of which enables the tissue to grow into the functional tissue that we want to, to transplant. Then we grow it in the lab for a few days to, to months, and we trans transplant it back to the defected organ. In our case, we make a heart patch, and we transplant it upon the scar tissue to bring back uh, heart cells into this organ. There are many challenges in tissue engineering. Uh, among them, is how to bring oxygen and nutrients into the core of the thick tissues that we are creating. The other is how to create this uh, heart patch in the right geometry. We want it to be anatomically matching the patient. And finally, we want to use ma both materials and cells that will be compatible in the human body, that won't be rejected by the immune uh, system. Uh, so we want to, be, uh, to create a large patch. Uh, the scar tissue in, uh, uh, in humans, of, uh, in patients, can reach up to a few centimeters in size. And in our body, every, each and every cell is about 150 microns from the nearest blood supplies, from blood vessels. So there is a, is a need to, while forming the, the tissue, create it with integrated blood vessels that will supply the, the cell with the, will nourish them with blood. Here you can see a picture of a rat's heart with a heart patch transplanted upon it without any blood vessels. And you can see most of it, if you can see the laser, most of it is white. That is because most of, most of the cells die in this patch. It, wasn't, it didn't have any blood vessels to support it. Uh, a major technology that is arising in, uh, in this field is bioprinting. Uh, which uh, gives uh, answers to do both of these uh, challenges, also by, by creating blood vessels inside and also by fitting, printing in the right geometry that we want to print the patch. In bioprinting, we print by layer by layer the position. We print living cells and biomaterials and or biomaterials to form this living tissue. However, it, is, it is, uh, has very constricted framework uh, environmental framework to work. Uh, both the materials we are using are very soft and uh, sometimes even uh, completely liquid. And we are also incorporating living cells. That means we need to maintain a temperature between uh, 4 degrees to 37 and, uh, because uh, then they can uh, just uh, simply die. 
Uh, so it's, it's very constrained uh, bioprinting. Although uh, using this technology, very nice works uh, done before us managed to create uh, about centimeters, a few centimeters high tissues with uh, incorporated blood vessels, living cells, and functional tissues that can be grown for a few weeks even while uh, maintaining the viability of the cells. However, both in these researchers and also today in the clinic, when we are using uh, materials that originated from uh, animals or synthetic materials, usually they can uh, create some uh, immune response in the body and uh, this patient will need to take uh, some immunosuppressors during the time of the, of the treatment, which is, uh, of course, uh, dangerous for most patients. And even though, sometimes the implant in the end will be rejected. So last year, sorry. Last year, we showed that you, by using uh, materials and cells from the patient itself, is much preferable than using uh, this kind of materials, like synthetic and uh, other regions. And we showed that both by uh, simulating uh, an immune, immune response in the lab, and also by implanting this kind of tissues in rats. All of which showed us that if we are going to use materials and cells from the patient it itself, it will be much preferable and won't be rejected. So in my research, we, uh, we created, we printed, heart patches, and as a proof of concept, even whole hearts, uh, using the patient's own materials and cells. How do we do that? So we take a small fatty tissue biopsy. Uh, it's a very simple procedure done today in the hospital. Using this tissue, we separate the, the cellular and acellular material. While the cells are being genetically reprogrammed to become heart cells, blood vessel forming cells, etc. The acetylal material is being processed into a hydrogel. We then mix the two together to form two distinct bioings. One to form the heart, heart patch, and the other to form the blood vessels. We then feed it into extrusion uh, bioprinter to print these kind of tissues. Since these tissues originated from the patient itself, they will not evoke an uh, adverse uh, immune response after being transplanted in the patient. This is how it looks like. So this is the fatty tissue. This is after we take all the cells out, and after additional processing, we are left with a thermoresponsive hydrogel, which is made mainly of collagen, which is a liquid at room temp, and it solidifies at 37 degrees. So this is our bioing. This is what we are printing. And meanwhile, we take the fat cells, we genetically reprogram them to become stem cells, as you can see here. Uh, then we can uh, proliferate and uh, duplicate them for, uh, to have enough amount. And we differentiate them into blood vessel forming cells, as you can see here, and heart cells for the printing. So this is our materials. As for the design, we used a CD scan of a human, hearts, of a human heart of a patient, and we separated the major blood vessels, and we transformed the geometry into a modeling software. Uh, to create our heart patch. Here you can see it here. And we wanted to model to see whether in all of the patch we have enough uh, oxygen concentration to sustain the cells. And we see all the areas in blue are insufficient uh, oxygen for the cells. Uh, that is because today CT scans in hospitals give a minimum resolution of about one millimeter and we miss all of the tiny blood vessels inside this patch. So we optimized the model to create uh, enough uh, blood vessels and oxygen supplies to sustain all of the patch. So this is the, the model that we want to print. Then we went on to the printing. So how do we, what is the method for printing these patches? So we used two uh, bioinks. One is the personalized hydrogel that we talk about, uh, mixed with uh, heart cells. This is one extrusion printed. The other, we used a material called gelatin. I guess most of you know it from the kitchen, which is a... Uh, stiff hydrogel at room temp, and at 37 degrees, it liqu completely liquefies. So we mixed it with the blood vessel forming cells, and we just printed in the middle of the printing layers. Um, after we finish the print of this patch, we warm all the patch to 37 degrees. The personalized hydrogel, the pink one, is uh, cross-linked, it gets solidified. And the green, the blood vessels, get liquefied with the gelatin and evacuated, sacrificed from the tunnels, leaving open tunnels. 
And the blood vessel forming cells uh, completely cover all of the blood vessel within. This is how the printing looks like. We have an extrusion uh, bioprinter, 150 micron uh, needle. This is the personal hydrogel with the heart cells. This is the layer of the gelatin with the blood uh, vessel forming cells. And then again, we cover it all with the personalized hydrogel. We then put it all into 37 degrees, and we are left with the heart patch and the blood vessels within. We showed we can uh, inject dye into the blood vessel, and they are open. And we can also pick the, the patch, pick, pick it up and submerge it in water, and it retains its shape. Furthermore, it was very important to show that the cells are not harmed from the process, uh, and, it, and they are completely viable. And after a few days of growing inside the lab, this uh, blood vessel forming cells completely cover the blood vessels. You can see here a uh, whole blood vessels covered with the, this kind of cells. This is also a 3D reconstruction of, uh, of one blood vessel, a slice of one blood vessel. You can see the blood vessel forming cells cover all the, in, uh, the internal uh, part of the blood vessels, and the supporting cells in red cover the, uh, the second part, sustaining those, uh, this uh, blood vessel. As for the uh, heart cells, you can see they, they propagate very nicely the electrical signal, and the entire, entire uh, heart patch is contracting spontaneously in the lab after a week of growing. We also implanted in uh, animals and showed that uh, after a week inside the animal, their hearts are viable, they are elongated, uh, which shows the, the implant was engrafted very nicely into the animal. We then want to move to print more volumetric, more thick structures. However, as you saw, our personalized hydrogel is a very uh, a liquid uh, material. And after we are printing a few layers, it's starting to collapse on its own. So in order to print more thick uh, structures, we needed to use some different technology. Here we relied on uh, different uh, advances, uh, very significant advances in our field of uh, supporting methods of printing inside a support medium. So we formulated a unique, uh, a unique formulation of supporting material made of a very tiny uh, micron size or less even uh, material submerged in a growth medium for, uh, for sustaining the cells. And it acts very nicely. When you print our personalized hydrogel inside of it, uh, the needle can just move through easily without interruption. But behind the needle, when we're the printing stern, strands are going from the needle, the supporting medium completely embraces the printing strand and holds it in, it in its position. This way, we can print completely in free form uh, without any effects of uh, gravity, actually. So this way, we could print uh, the structure. We cross-link, we warm it to 37, we cross-link, we stiff the, uh, the construct. Then we evacuate, sorry. OK, yeah, we evacuate the, the supporting material. And we are left with our construct, with the tissue. We can grow it in a growth medium uh, for further maturation. This is how it looks like. Uh, we can print uh, very nice uh, structures uh, with high resolution, even complex structures, like a sphere inside a sphere. You can see here the printing of the grid inside the supporting material. And this, you have to, after we dissolve the supporting material, it just floats in the water, retaining its shape. The resolution of the printing is uh, very high. It's about 100 micron. And uh, we believe that uh, with the same technology, we can reach up to a few microns uh, of uh, printing strands. However, since we are incorporating living cells in this uh, project, we didn't want to use uh, smaller needles. We don't want to. Uh, make too much shear stress upon the cells, we can harm them. So we were restricted to the 100 micron resolution of the printing. And then we moved on to printing uh, blood vessels. So we didn't have to use the gelatin, the sacrificial gelatin in this, uh, in this case, because we have the support medium both from the inside of the blood vessels and from the outside. So we printed blood vessels with the same uh, kind of cells. We also printed a 3D uh, blood vessel system, and we showed that it is uh, opened in all these uh, different regions. 
We show the occult also can connect it to a perfusion system and perfuse a red dye. This is from two, two different cameras at the same time. And it still uh, has its shape after extraction from the supporting medium, of course. And then as a proof of concept, we wanted to move on to printing whole hearts. So we took a human heart uh, model. We added the major blood vessels. You can see here one slice of the printing program with the main chambers and the blood vessels. When the, in green, you have the blood vessel forming cells, and in gray, it's the heart cells. And we went on to the printing. So we printed whole cellular hearts with their basic anatomical structures and their uh, uh, major blood vessels. You can see here, if you can see well, in the middle of the print, you can see the chambers. And uh, this is without the, the dye. You can see also uh, uh, the heart is uh, retaining its structure also after evacuation of, of the supporting material. And if, after, if, if we take it out of the water, it still retains its shape. You can inject a dye to the different chambers. This is also a 3D reconstruction showing the chambers. And the cells are in the right position and in their physiological concentration. This is the same concentration of uh, cells we have uh, in our heart. I must mention here that the cells are living, and each and every one of them can contract very nicely. However, in order to, for the whole heart to create a really pumping uh, ability of blood, we need to grow this tissue for a long period of time to, to give the cells time to arrange, to communicate with each other. And this process takes time. So we, the next stage is a very important stage. First, we wanted to show that we can uh, perfuse this heart uh, in order to grow it for a, long, uh, for a longer time. And this is a bottleneck that, uh, in all of the field of tissue engineering, is how to take thick uh, tissues and grow them for a long period of time. We are not the only one that uh, deals with this kind of uh, 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 problem. So uh, the idea is to print this, uh, this heart and immediately connect it to a perfusion system uh, we call it a bioreactor. It's a special capsule that uh, saves the special environment uh, required for the cells and the tissue. Then we could uh, mature and grow this heart for a long period of time. We're talking about a few months, I guess. And when it uh, will retain its ability to uh, contract, to pump uh, nicely, we will move on to our transplantation in animal, animal models. Uh, and hopefully, uh, maybe in the future, in, uh, I guess it will take many years, but hopefully one day in uh, humans, when we can uh, really hopefully uh, change the, the need for uh, organ donations and uh, use uh, 3D printed organs uh, or for uh, uh, drug screening, it also can be very useful. So this is the future for us. That's it. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. It was a great ride. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Noor.